Several volunteers of the Time Detectives scoured the collections of museums in London, Berlin, Paris, Rome, New York, Chicago, Cairo, and San Francisco. One of the challenges confronting time detectives is that Egyptian artifacts have been sold, stolen, or given away to many private collections and museums. In other words, the clues to the mystery of the Egyptian maze are spread out all over the world. We found lots of evidence of corn cobs and corn plants in the Egyptian tombs and temples. This comes as quite a surprise, considering that all the authorities, all the tenure professors, and all the encyclopedias claim that there is no evidence of Egyptian maize. Here is an example of an artifact that is decorated with corn plants at the Cairo Museum. It is from the, the Nakwada I phase of archaeology. That means that the artifact dates to about 4000 BC. That's from the earliest phase of farming along the Nile River. In other words, the corn was already there when the ancient Egyptians first started farming. Here is a comparison of a Hopi Indian maize decoration with the Egyptian corn plant in the middle. The pattern of drooping leaves terminating with corn tassels at the very top are very similar to the modern corn plant. Here is a schematic drawing of a tomb mural from the Cairo Museum. The mural dates to about 2000 BC. The corn plant is with a food offering display on the right hand side of the mural. Here we see an enlargement of the mural from Amenhemhet's tomb, and the corn plant is identifiable from the yellow corn cob and the green husk leaves. Many of the Old Kingdom murals were not very well uh, carved or painted, and one Egyptian authority, Helen Strudwick, calls this Old Kingdom example lettuce. Another variety of maize is shown in this example from a tomb on the Giza Plateau near Cairo. Typically, the maize ears are shown on platters or on food displays along with breads, jars of beer, and butchered animals. Here is an example of a tombstone with a corn cob. There was an association of maize with the Osiris cult of resurrection. Tens of thousands of these stone monuments were made in Egypt. The British Museum has over a hundred stored away in a warehouse. This is an illustration from a papyrus book called the Book of the Dead. It comes from a scroll in the British Museum dating to about 1200 BC. These examples are from the British Museum. On the left are Sumerian hieroglyphs for corn and a generic glyph for grain that is in the shape of a corn plant or a bush. On the right hand side is a glass jug with a corn plant which served as a decoration. Here is a comparison of a Sumerian glyph for grain and a modern corn plant. The Sumerian grain symbol dates to a period between 4000 and 5000 BC, so it would appear that corn or maize was present in the Middle East right about at the time that huge city-states started forming up along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. This was very near the dawn of Western civilization. A period called the New Kingdom starts in about 1500 BC in Egypt. It is at the beginning of this period that corn cobs had their greatest level of realism. This example is from the tomb of Nakhet, circa 1424 BC. There is a corn cob with very distinctive kernels. There can be no question that this plant was intended to represent Indian corn. Here's another example of corn cobs from the tomb of Seti I, dated to about 1292 BC. In about 1500 BC, Egyptian methods of agriculture and food preparation spread to Mexico. Here we see a comparison of women in Egypt and Mexico using the same kind of equipment to grind corn. One name for the corn dough in Egypt was masa, and the same word was used by Mexican women for corn dough used to make tortillas. The Egyptian word masa, or mas, is probably the root for later words of mace or maize. I have identified Pharaoh Hatshepsut as the queen of maize. It is during the reign of this woman pharaoh that the most realistic illustrations of Indian corn crop up in Egyptian tombs. The queen's maize is found at her temple museum at Deir el-Bari. This huge temple is located in the upper Nile region across from Luxor and Thebes. Here is an example of a mural from Hatshepsut's temple. This reconstruction is by Howard Carter in 1909. It appeared in an exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City in 12205. Uh, 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 the museum is known simply as the Met. It was also published in a book about the exhibit by Catherine Rorick. Oddly enough, nobody at the Met seems to have noticed that the New World Corn was part of the Hatshepsut special exhibit. Here's an enlargement of the maze in Hatshepsut's temple. This illustration shows the corn cobs that decorate a single room in Hatshepsut's temple. The room is called the Anubis Chapel. There are over 30 corn cobs intermingled with the fruits, breads, and jars in the offering displays. This is an illustration from the Queen's Temple. It shows the kind of vessel that 
members of the Punt expedition used to sail across the Atlantic Ocean. It would appear that the temple was intended to promote overseas commerce. An Egyptian text from the reign of Pharaoh Ramses III refers to an overseas region called the Inverted Waters. This is a reference to a place on the earth where lands and seas are upside down with respect to Egypt. In other words, it is evident that at least some of the intellectual leaders in ancient Egypt understood the, spher the spherical shape of the world. This is an Olmec colossal head from San Lorenzo, Mexico. It is dated to a period from 1400 to 900 BC. Obviously, the stone carving has the facial features of a black African. Here's a black and white comparison of the Olmec head with a schematic image of a modern day resident of Ghana, Africa. Note the close similarity. This is not a coincidence of abstract art. The distinctive lip ridge is a genetic trait that rules out any possibility that it resulted from an abstraction. The pronounced lip ridge is a characteristic of artwork in 15th century BC, Egypt, and Mexico. Here is a comparison of lip ridges from three Olmec statues with a contemporary Egyptian sculpture. This is the imposing exterior of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. This is one of many libraries where time detectives searched for published sources on Egyptian maize. We had documented 124 corn cobs in Egyptian tombs, temples, and scrolls by August of 2008. A preliminary report in this study was presented to the First Atlantic Conference on August the 16th. By October of last year, my associates and I had documented 425 corn cobs in ancient Egyptian art. Even you can become an instant authority on Egyptian maize simply by examining art books at your local library or at your secondhand bookstore. Here is a summary table of what we found. Note that during the last phase of Egyptian history, the post-dynastic period at the bottom, the corn cobs had become so stylized that they didn't look anything at all like Indian corn.